guys, Connor here with Chrome Designs and thank you for watching this video. Today is just Cinema 4D video and today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be creating this kind of square abstract mesh field as you see uh, kind of bluntly in the middle of your screen. And uh, the vivid colours, I just added materials and um, I think without further ado, I think we should get started. You can see, you can see what we're going to be creating. Uh, let's just make a new, uh, new canvas and we're going to add in a square a cube. And um, you want to set the uh, dimensions for your cube that you just added um, in now, as it will be really awkward changing later. Uh, so I want to keep this size exactly the same. However, I'm going to add a bit of curved edges to make it more sleek. And uh, one thing also with adding curved edges, it picks up the reflections more, uh, ultimately making it a little bit more glossy. I uh, just so want to change the radius to 10. And there we have it, we've got our basic square. Yeah, but as you just saw, you want, you want loads of them. Uh, so to do this, we're going to go to the cloner object, and we find this under the MoGraph and cloner object tab. And you want to, I'll tell you what, um, the cube, I'm going to hold control and drag down and drag down and drag down, and that will create new copies. Uh, use as many copies as you want, I'm going to use four, uh, purely because that will then make uh, more, more, more copies of the square, basically, and you can use different colours uh, for each, as you've seen, so they're all different colours, save so you doing them individually. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I'll shift all these and drag them as a child of the cloner object. There we go. And uh, you notice that it hasn't really taken any shape as of yet. I uh, just need to add it with some cloner, cloner properties. And so first of all, you want to make, you want to change the mode to grid array. And you see, it's starting to take a bit more shape. Uh, you want to change the count to 25. Uh, leave that on three, and then 25. And then go down to the size. And you want to use something like 3750, I believe this is what I used, and uh, 3750 again, again leave in the middle one uh, as it is. So uh, you've got left 3 and 200, and uh, you see you kind of got this kind of floor kind of grid like pattern, and it's looking a bit weird, a bit like a just, uh, jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle, and uh, it's looking okay, but you've got all it disjointed and... Um, uh, and go in different ways. So the first thing you're going to do here is have cloner object selected. Again, go to MoGraph and Random Effector, and uh, you see immediately um, that the squares have popped up uh, randomly. Uh, kind of ironic that the Random Effector produces random things, but you know, uh, there we go. And simply, all we do from here, uh, if you want to change it, that is, is you just go to Rotation tick that tab down on the um, attributes panel and just uh, change different change it to different properties does not really matter at all uh, the more random it is I suppose the better so then 100 there we go that is looking okay and that's pretty much it uh, maybe if you want to animate it for example you get all the squares to move go on the clone object make sure make sure you're on keyframe one and uh, random effector and under the rotation tool, make sure you've got all of them selected, all that highlighted, and hit click control in the little circle. So you see the little it comes up with a little red dot. This shows that it's been keyframed. So then move to keyframe. I'll move to keyframe 60, so it's two seconds long. Uh, change these settings to uh, minus 10, uh, 70, and minus 80. There we go, and then key. You see the circles turn yellow. Simply click Control and tick in the middle again, and it will come red, showing that you've keyframed it. So if go to the keyframe one and play. You will see that the cubes are kind of slowly but surely, and they're laggingly um, producing a wireframe image for whatever reason, and uh, it's kind of yeah, basically rotating. So that's how you do that. And uh, maybe I'll just do maybe tip for a tutorial. The textures rather materials, uh, make a new material. Uh, all I'd done was to get the glossy ones was I went to texture and gradient and then chose whatever color. For example, I'd choose I'd choose a blue. Uh, two slightly different shades of blue. Uh, not too different though. But uh, that's looking no good. That's okay. Then go back to the color tabs and go to texture and copy channel, uh, luminance and paste channel. So this will make it nice and bright uh, so it's not dull, and we got a bit of a reflection on there. Tone down the normal reflection, 
and under the texture go to Fresnel and tone this down to something like 35 in that region maybe put this up to 10 uh, 10 and 35 I think works quite well uh, it, it, that, that, that enables it to be really glossy yet yeah, still had a bit of realism in there uh, so I'm going to drag these onto all of them because uh, I'm not going to spend the time doing them for individual squares uh, but there we go if you render it out here you see you got the cubes uh, doesn't obviously look like you just saw that looks quite cool, it looks interesting Interesting. Uh, but the way I did it you got to go to render under settings and just add some ambient occlusion and global illumination kind of the typical render settings you know you use when uh, when, you, when working on a project ambient occlusion make uh, contrast of 20% and maximum ray length to 150 there we go and then maybe just add in a light like so, drag it up like we've been lagging at the moment mm, starting to lag while I record extremely annoying there we go maybe focus in now so a quick look at what that looks like that might look quite cool could look good, could look bad, we'll see we'll see whenever it decides to render now one thing I did notice, when, it, when, when you render with uh, global illumination you see, it comes up with this screen beforehand to like, show that it's rendering and I always thought that looked quite cool just thought I'd say that, yeah you see kind of abstract shapes and it looks interesting and uh, anyway you see in this little section that's coming along uh, it's looking quite nice, uh, taking more shape more defined edges, crisper squares uh, than what you would initially saw uh, purely because of ambient occlusion, kind of creating realistic shadows, uh, so you can pick out the individual squares, so it's not a big blur. And again, uh, kind of uh, so 360 surround lighting uh, produced by global illumination uh, helps that as well. Uh, but anyway, that's all from today. So we're creating this wire mesh, wire the kind of square mesh field in Cinema 4D. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. I'm in Chrome Designs, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.